the history of U.S. foreign policy. Foreign policy refers to our nation's relationships with other countries. Sometimes we also call this diplomacy. To understand current U.S. policy, we need to look to the past. After our country was founded, the U.S. was struggling to build its government and pay off debt accumulated during the Revolutionary War. So until World War II, the United States did not play a major role in world politics. This time period is known as isolationism. During this time frame, the Monroe Doctrine was established. It stated that the United States would not interfere with affairs in Europe, and it warned European countries to stay out of the affairs of the Western Hemisphere, which includes North and South America. By the late 1800s, with its growing economy and military strength, the United States was becoming a stronger force in the world. In 1898, the United States fought and won the Spanish-American War and gained control of Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Philippines. During this same time frame, the U.S. annexed Hawaii and gained control of land in Panama to start building the Panama Canal. This was America's first major break in our policy of isolationism. However, in 1914, when World War I broke out in Europe, President Woodrow Wilson wanted to keep the United States neutral and isolated from the war. For three years, he succeeded. In 1917, Germany used submarine warfare to sink U.S. ships they suspected were helping their enemies. In response, the United States declared war against Germany and officially joined World War I. At the end of the war, the U.S. government recognized that the terrible loss of life in Europe never solved the reasons World War I began, and they became more determined than ever to remain isolated. When World War II began in 1939, again, the official U.S. policy was to stay neutral. However, in 1941, Japan attacked the U.S. military base in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Once again, the United States entered a world war. When the war ended, the United States and Soviet Union emerged as two major world powers. This was the beginning of a new period of U.S. foreign policy called globalism. It was based on the idea that the United States would now be prepared to protect its interests around the world by using its military force. In the years following the end of World War II, tensions grew between the United States and the Soviet Union. These disagreements grew from essential differences between the two countries. The United States favored democracy and free enterprise, while the Soviet Union favored communism and a command economy. This time period is known as the Cold War because the United States and the Soviet Union never actually fought against each other using their militaries, but they did spy on each other and took sides against each other in other civil wars around the world. During this time, the United States feared that the Soviet Union would try to spread communism to other nations around the world. They took several steps to try to prevent this from happening. In 1947, the Truman Doctrine was introduced and made it clear that the United States was dedicated to helping countries around the world maintain their freedom from communism. In order to help European countries rebuild after World War II without having to ask the Soviet Union for help, the United States offered them economic aid through the Marshall Plan. The U.S. also created a military alliance with Western Europe called the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, also known as NATO, to further protect against the spread of communism. This introduced a new era of foreign policy known as containment, in other words, the United States was trying to contain communism or keep it from spreading. This policy of containment led the United States into two world wars. In the 1950s, the Korean War ended with Korea being divided into two countries, the Communist North and the Democratic South. In the 1960s, more than 58,000 Americans died fighting in the Vietnam War, but Vietnam still fell to communism. 
This led to some Americans beginning to question the policies of globalism and containment. And in 1969, President Richard Nixon started a new foreign policy called detente. Its purpose was to relax tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union, but the relationship between the two countries continued to be strained throughout the 70s and 80s. Soon, however, the Soviet Union would have bigger problems than its sour relationship with the United States. In 1989, the Soviet Union began to fall apart. The wall that separated communist East Berlin from democratic West Berlin was knocked down. The Berlin Wall had been a symbolic dividing line between communist and capitalist Europe. Over the next few years, the struggling Soviet Union divided itself back into separate countries as Russia freed nations it had previously controlled. At the same time, the citizens of many of these countries overthrew their communist governments in favor of democracy. Although the end of the Cold War signaled a change in American foreign policy, the U.S. was still involved in diplomatic and military actions around the world. During the Gulf War in the Middle East, Iraq invaded Kuwait, and the United States military intervened and drove them back out. Most troops were quickly withdrawn, but U.S. leaders negotiated with Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and several other nations to establish American access to oil in the Middle East. Throughout the 90s, many Americans began losing interest in foreign policy and were distracted by problems in the United States instead. However, on September 11, 2001, Americans again became very interested with foreign affairs. The terrorist attacks in New York City and Washington, D.C. renewed American interest in foreign policy, specifically the issue of international terrorism. As a result, today Americans tend to be concerned with national security and more aware of global issues.